the march of the formal educational curriculum is at a very different pace from how kids' interests develop and the ways in which they need to explore and um, develop their interests that are based on their own choices about what they want to look at and what they want to learn. And so you, if you have a system that's telling kids exactly what to do and how to pace it, that doesn't value exploration and self-initiated inquiry, then you're not building in kids the capacity to make effective choices themselves about how to learn and the pace and the sequencing of how they should learn and the ways they find supports for it. So kids not only have to learn how to nurture and support interests and expertise development based on what they want to do and accomplish in real life, but they have to learn how to build their own social relationships, how to find others with expertise, how to recruit mentors. Now the formal educational system doesn't teach kids how to do that because they deliver it all packaged in advance. One of the things that the internet has handed us is a complete abundance of knowledge, expertise, and social connectivity. And it's like we have an abundance of riches that in the past used to be fairly scarce. And we used to depend on experts and teachers and classrooms to deliver expertise and knowledge to our kids. Those things are still really good sources of knowledge, but you can also find it on the internet in a way that really wasn't possible a generation ago. And so we used to have sort of capacity bottlenecks where, you know, if you wanted to learn math or if you wanted to learn science or anything that was kind of hard and not just lying around in your everyday life, then you had to go to school or you had to go to the library. There were limited places. And now we don't have that problem, but our institutions of education still act as if we do. What's so different about the connected learning model and the more conventional notions of education is the fact that education isn't bound to particular institutions anymore. It happens everywhere. We already know that most of the learning that people do doesn't happen in the classroom. We're so used to now giving responsibility for learning to professionals instead of looking at how it's part of the fabric of our interactions with everybody, with our kids every day, with our colleagues, uh, with our, you know, people in our community. And I think that's the hardest thing because it also forces people to take responsibility and ownership. There's so many people in any environment who have knowledge and expertise. So now the problem is not how do you package it and deliver it, uh, the problem is effective matchmaking. So how does a kid find that mentor or that peer who is going to introduce them or support them in developing their interests, making their interests relevant, developing a sense of purpose? Um, and it's not about actually finding the information anymore. So I think the the model that we're trying to develop with connected learning is really to say how can we use the capacity of these network resources, these social connections, to bring people together who want to learn together. I think our greatest aspiration is that this becomes the kernel of a set of ideas that enable a lot of people in a wide range of spheres and fields to take it up and do something with it. So that's the whole point of it, right, is not just to have the ideas, but to have things that are actionable and actionable by lots of people, not just the experts, not just the teachers, not just the people designing fancy technology. So what's great about the connected learning model is it's something everybody can participate in. It's not about being affiliated with an institution. It's not about having a very specific kind of expertise. It's not about being a math genius. It's about expertise that's widely distributed in our society and culture and the fact that anybody can help somebody else get better at something.
The great side benefit of people connecting around interests and learning is the fact that it fosters social connection and well-being because people like to connect with one another and they like to connect with people who share interests. It creates a sense of fulfillment, belonging, and purpose, psychological well-being when people have connections that support the kinds of identities that they really value. And so it definitely has a side effect of building community and intergenerational relationships, which possibly is more important than the actual expertise or knowledge being cultivated.